All right, so in this video here, we're going to um, continue working with solving equations uh, with parentheses in it, so using the distributive property. But this part of um, Khan Academy, it focuses on uh, including decimals and fractions. So a lot of the tips that I'm going to be giving in this video are more so um, mental math strategies for working with decimals and fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. What I need to do is share my screen. And I'm going to do four problems for you guys. Here we go. Here's the first one. We have ourselves a situation where we're going to need to distribute the 10 across the parentheses to those two terms there. So we have 10 times 0 0.4. Now, this is a nice number because 10 times anything with a decimal, you're just moving the decimal over one time, right? So 10 times 0.4 is going to be the same thing as... 4. 10 times 0.4 is 4. Anytime you have anything with a decimal in it and you're multiplying by 10, you're just moving the digit over one spot. So move the decimal over one spot. 10 times 0.5g just turns into, again, same thing, just move it over one. So now it's 5g equals 4g. All right. So now we have this equation here. 4 plus 5g equals 4g. Um, I'll just subtract 5G from both sides to get the uh, 4, the constant, over here all by itself. And this will go away. We have 4 equals negative 1G. Now, that's great. We don't want to solve for negative G. We want to solve for positive G. So I can just both, multiply both sides by negative 1. Anytime you solve an equation and you get your variable that you desire, but it's negative, all you need to do is just multiply both sides by negative 1. And you end up with negative 4 is the solution of G. So our answer here is negative 4. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Again, we have parentheses. We have a fraction this time. We're distributing an 8 across parentheses here. And let's go ahead and simplify. The left side of the equation just stays the same. 6s minus 4 equals, and on this side we have 8 times 2, which is 16. 8 times 1 fourth. So the way that you normally would be taught this, all right, would be 8 times 1 fourth. Fourth, the long way of explaining this is that you multiply across the numerator. So you multiply your numerators. Eight times one is eight. And eight is the same thing as eight over one, right? Anything divided by one is itself. 2,000 divided by one is 2,000. 10 billion divided by one is 10 billion. So eight over one. And on the denominator, that's where we're going to multiply straight across as well. One times four is four. So we end up with eight over four, which simplifies down to two. Another way of doing this, which you may see teachers do or talk about, is if we're doing eight times one fourth, this is the same thing as saying eight times one divided by four. And the order of operations with multiplication or division, if that's all you're doing, we have the commutative property, meaning like you can do things in any order you want because multiplication and division, they're all on the same level. So we could do eight divided by four first. Eight divided by four is two, and then two times one is two. That's, that's something you may see teachers talk about. I know for sure at the Algebra 2 level, um, I personally start doing that, those kinds of shortcuts with kiddos. Um, so it's up to you as far as if you want to take that for, you know, yeah, just a little fun little conversation there. So 8 times 1 fourth S, that is going to be 2 S. All right. Now we have ourselves an equation with variables on both sides of the equation. We have constants on both sides of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2s to get rid of it from this side. And when I do so, I end up with a 4s minus 4 equals 16. So now I have all my variables on the left-hand side. I'm going to want to get rid of this um, constant right here by doing the inverse operation. So I'll add four to both sides. 4s equals 20. 
And then now do the inverse operation of four times S. We're gonna divide both sides by four and we get S equals five as our solution. All right, halfway there. Two to go, let's go baby, let's go. All right, distributing 2.5 across parentheses here. All right, 2.5 times four. Um, you know, a lot of these, these are, are more simpler uh, decimals and fractions to work with, but you can think of it as $2.50, you know, $2.50 plus $2.50, $5 plus $2.50, $7.50, plus $2.50, that's 10, $10. So you got 10K, that's a 10, 10K plus two times 2.5. Another way of doing this is two times two is four, two times 0.5, two times 50 cents, two times 0.5 is one. So two times two is four, two times 0.5 is one, so that makes a five. Um, I know you guys can rely on a calculator if you have to, but I'd like for you guys to continue to challenge yourselves. Um, do fractions and decimals using mental math, using paper and pencil, doing the best you can to challenge yourself to be able to do it on your own without relying on the calculator, especially when it's an easy number like 2.5. All right, 2.5, you should be able to multiply and work with. And if you can't, the only way you're gonna get better at it is practice, all right? Now we're just gonna uh, start working on balancing the equation. So let's get all of the variables on one side, take away 10K to get rid of it over there. And whatever you do to one side, do to the other side, we have five equals two K. All right, gotta get K by itself. So let's divide by two on both sides. And our solution is five halves, or you could view that as two and a half. Now, as far as how will uh, Khan Academy accept it, they would accept five halves. They would also accept this in decimal format, 2.5. And they may accept the mixed fraction. Let's see, two and a half. If I do two space, one half, it'll take it as well. So any equivalent form of five halves, two and a half, 2.5, any of those would work. One more to go here, and we are distributing six across parentheses. The left side, I'm just going to rewrite 4n plus 2 equals 6 times 1 third n. Again, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 divided by 3, 2. So we have 2n. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So it's minus 4. Key things here is don't forget the minus. Make sure that when you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, just multiply it into the numerator and then simplify it by dividing if possible. All right, let's start working towards uh, simplifying this. Uh, I'm gonna subtract 2n from the right-hand side to get it over here and get all my variables combined together in one spot. 4n minus 2n is 2n. I'll bring down the plus two equals negative four. All right, now that we have all the variables combined together on one side of the equation, let's go ahead and do the same thing with the constant here. Let's do the inverse operation of having to. So we're gonna subtract two. And that leaves us with 2n equals negative four minus two, it's negative six. Inverse operation to finish this problem off here, divide both sides by two, and n is equal to negative three. All right, so I didn't necessarily come across any problems that were overly difficult, but basically some basic reminders as far as working with decimals. Um, you're multiplying by tens. You're just moving the digit over, or sorry, the decimal over just one spot. Um, multiplying a whole number by a fraction. I covered that in this video. There's other things you may come across. There's nothing wrong with using a calculator to check your work. I really would like you to do try mental math first, then go to paper and pencil to confirm. And then if you're still feeling kind of like, eh, I don't know if I did this right, use a calculator. Um, and I know a lot of you guys are kind of in a stressful situation because you're trying to get four of these correct in a row. Um, but don't, don't stress too much about that part. Um, I really want you guys to get good at working with decimals and fractions. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Let me go ahead and stop sharing and 
See you again on the next one.